Thank you, Fenners, for, for the presentation. I think we, we've conducted a series of uh, crit critical care sessions together. And just beyond the critical care courses, we went on to try a patient assessment checklist for critically ill surgical patients. I think we are all familiar with the concepts of uh, the checklist. It's not unfamiliar. I think the best med medical use of it is a safe surgical checklist. So we formulated this checklist just to, which is in keeping with the principles of primary survey, patient resuscitation, and secondary survey. So the checklists have become a valuable tool in making surgery safer by producing structured thinking process under high pressure. We know that the uh, surgical trainees in Africa have got a huge workload. We want them to act promptly and yet to uphold the best quality in terms of decision making. So they often have to deal with these multi multi multiple injured patients. At the same time, they have to do this rapid, rapid assessment and decide appropriately so that more lives are saved. You, sometimes they may find it difficult to track everyone's critical condition. Therefore, we formulated this to help in patient diagnostics as well as therapeutic process. Next slide, please. So for the critical care course, we want the trainees to be taught how to have that structured thinking, even if they are under pressure, to teach ABC. What do we mean ABC? We make it very simple. To be able to push in air in and get the air out, as well as to keep blood circulating round and round and round. If you can achieve those two things, then you, are, you know crit what critical care is. So this is supposed to give a systematic approach to critical illness conditions that a junior doctor is almost oftenly called for. Those are some of the conditions that oftentimes they are called. The senior doctors may be home. They have to be called back into the hospital. But these are, these are the first responders. Whenever there's a problem, they'll be called for these emergencies, such as cardiac arrest and all that, up to patients that are dying. Or sometimes it's not even the patient, maybe the relatives that need to be explained to. So the aim of the project was to provide a simple checklist to be used in surgical critically ill patients to guide this rapid systematic patient assessment, decision making, treatment, as well as communication, which oftentimes is neglected in our area. So the checklist was developed and it, it upholds the principles, these universal principles that we employ. It's taught under principles that are taught in COSEXA critical care course and also in management of surgical emergencies course. But you'll see that they are nearly the same universal principles that are applied in all other courses that are taught in critical areas of surgery especially. Next slide. So this is the first part of the checklist, which is supposed to deal with patient assessment, primary assessment, resuscitation, secondary assessment. So did I complete primary survey, looking at the A, B, C, D? Okay. Have I completed the resuscitation? Did I need to administer any oxygen or IV fluids? Did I complete the secondary survey, looking at detailed history, if there are any reports to refer to? Did I do a thorough examination so that I don't miss any of the injuries? Are there, again, charts that I can also look at to follow the pattern of the, uh, the, 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 the physiology of the patient? And look at the result, if at all, they are available for analysis. Or beyond that, do I need to, to speak to anybody? It might be a colleague, a senior, or maybe the relatives. Then the second part of their checklist is now to do with decision making. Is my patient stable or unstable? Those basic, basic question, questions, and yet they are useful. Or maybe I'm not sure whether the patient is stable or not. If not, then where is the problem? Is it that I'm failing to make a diagnosis? Or maybe I'm limited in terms of therapeutic options? Or it's both, it could be both. Or how do I need to intervene? Is it diagnostic? Is it therapeutic? Or ask for, for help so that people come in to also import. Whilst this is happening, we should realize that supporting the patient has to be there continuously. So, Meanwhile, am I supporting the A, B, C, and tissue optimally to keep the patient alive? 
So the, met the second method we did was to try this checklist, the same checklist in three sites, Ndola, Lusaka, and Lilongwe, just to ask the feedback from the people that are first respondents and to ask, did this checklist help to assess patients in a structured way? Did it help with decision making? Did the checklist help with handover asking for help? In what category did you put the patient that you treated? So we got both qualitative as well as quantitative results. In terms of the quantitative, this is showing the, the odd results which we did not collect, but I'll still present based on this. You'll find that 13 out of 14 said yes, it helped to assess the patient in a structured way. And then we got 13 again out of 14, which said yes, it also helped them in terms of decision making. For handover, 12 out of 14 said yes, it was a useful tool. And then they had to place the, the patient categories in the categories that we, were, we had hinted to them. They were still able to suggest new categories. Some of them had picked not just one, but more than one, such as maybe hypoxia and confusion and so on and so forth. Next. So some of the extracts from the, the, the results that we caught, I'll just read them out. The checklist provide, provided a stepwise fashion for assessing ill patients, making sure no vital information was erroneously omitted. The checklist helped me to put my thoughts in a systematic and orderly manner. It also reminded me of things I could have overlooked. It helped to avoid missing obvious reversible causes that needed attention, in this case, hypotension. And my immediate action was to start IV, IV fluid resuscitation. I realized I had to speak to my senior and also the relatives. I would have panicked and just called the senior and forget the relatives. Guidance was provided on each and every step considered uh, critical in assessment of the patient. Decisions were made promptly and the right drug therapy instituted accordingly. So in conclusion, the patient assessment checklist facilitates critically ill patient management through providing structure to clinical assessment, rapid decision making, and treatment communication as well as handover. So in Malawi where we got the last responses, I, I, I'll quote again, we need to put checklists on the wall so everyone can see it in casualty. So these are the sentiments that are coming from the trainees that have used this checklist. Thank you.